Hey, sweetie pies, it's Carla, and I am back again in my kitchen today for a triple threat of an episode. I am talking about sweet potatoes, but not one, and not two, and not three different ways to make them, um, but yeah, three different ways to make sweet potatoes. The core of this episode is really about my favorite method for cooking the sweet potatoes, and then for topper whoppers, I'm gonna take you on a real ride, starting with sweet potatoes and tahini butter. It is simple, it is delicious. Then jumping through to herby black lentils and yogurt, it is hearty, it is definitely dinner. And then finally, my favorite, brown butter, chili pepper, crunchy, seedy, nut mix with a fried egg. It's all gonna happen here. It takes about 30 minutes from start to finish. Please come along with me on this steamy sweet potato journey. So the way that I love to cook sweet potatoes is by steaming. When you steam sweet potatoes, you've got a high heat, high moisture environment. They cook really quickly. They get kind of plumped up with moisture. They're almost like pudding-like in their texture inside. And even if you're going to crisp up the sweet potato later, steaming it first and then cooling it is just like really easy. It takes 30 minutes. What I've got over here is just a couple inches of water with a steamer basket, bringing that up to a simmer. And just for the fun of it, I have a few different types of sweet potatoes. You're gonna find all different kinds and we don't have everything represented here. They might be labeled just sweet potatoes, which these ones were. Sometimes you'll see the garnet yam or red sweet potato they're very bright vibrant orange inside that's these guys and then we also have Japanese sweet potatoes which are kind of purple on the outside but are gonna have like a creamy yellow color inside they're all really delicious you can use any type for this preparation set a timer for 30 minutes as long as you have enough water in that pot and you set a timer really nothing can go wrong the first topping I'm gonna go through is the first one that I ever developed which is just called sweet potatoes with tahini butter looking back on it I could have sassed up that title a little bit more into this six tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature. I've also got tahini. There's lots of brands on the market, but just use regular tahini. Sometimes when you open it, there will be like natural peanut butter, a layer of oil on top. So just mix that in. Tablespoon of soy, two teaspoons of toasted sesame oil. If you don't have toasted sesame oil, I think you could use another toasted nut oil like uh, walnut oil or pistachio oil. I'm using lime juice. You could definitely sub rice vinegar or lemon juice or another cider vinegar would probably work. Quarter cup of fresh lime juice. I'm gonna tell you right now that you are gonna start mixing this together and you are gonna say that crazy woman once again has put me on a fool's errand. There is no way on this great earth of ours that this mixture is ever gonna come together. I have that feeling too when I make it and I haven't made it in a while because it does not seem that there is enough fat to hold all of these liquids together. But as with so many other things in our human consciousness, you just have to believe. Smash it, bash it, mix it, paddle it, get into it, pass it off to someone else, use a hand blender, use an electric mixer. Basically what I've done here is like push the amount of seasonings in the form of essentially the soy sauce and the lime juice to the absolute max of what this amount of fat will hold. And the sesame oil is helping to hold the fat as well. I'm gonna use many different tools, perhaps. Okay, now it looks like when you whip cream and it starts to break into the curds of the butter, that's what it looks like now. If your butter's cold, you're gonna really not have a fun time, so make sure that it's room temp. That looks pretty good. I do still see a few pieces of butter, but I'll just come back and whisk this right before serving. Tasting this for salt and pepper, which is definitely gonna need. The soy is obviously gonna give saltiness. Very limey. So the reason it's so limey is because the sweet potato is so sweet. The reason that this topping works is because you have this delicious, earthy, sweetness of the sweet potato and in the toppings it's got the saltiness the sourness this other 
deep nuttiness. We're gonna add texture in the form of the sesame seeds and the sweet potato like needs all of that. The idea of just sweet potato with like maple syrup has never made any sense to me because it's just sweet on top of sweet. So when you taste this and you think to yourself that it's very, very limey, that's on purpose. Mmm. One more salt. Okay, topping number one is done. Let's move on to number two. Sweetie pea, topping number two. The cook time on these lentils, even though I'm starting from dry, is going to be absolutely concurrent with the sweet potatoes. Starting with one shallot. Instead of chopping it, I'm actually just gonna grate it on the large holes of this box grater. It's gonna make me cry like crazy, but it goes also very quickly. You know when you open a shallot and there's like two lobes in there? That's still one shallot. So go more by the size of the whole shallot than how many lobes. I can't wait for the days to get longer. <laughs> All right, into this little saucepan, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of oil. I'm keeping this lentil preparation ridiculously simple because it's easier to embellish than it is to take away. To this, I'm adding one teaspoon of cumin seed. You could add turmeric to this. You could add tomato paste to this to see which spices you want to use up. This is not that much shallot and I want it to go quickly because we're trying to make dinner in half an hour. So it's more of a little bit of a fry in oil until you start to see some browning. So that's like a six minute-ish process. Shallots look great, took on color really fast. They're nice and shriveled. These are black beluga lentils. They are also sometimes sold as caviar lentils because they look like little beads of caviar. If you can't find black belugas, and I myself in a few different stops couldn't, use a small green French lentil, not a split pea. I want to coat the lentils with the oil, with the flavors of the shallot, with a little bit of that spice. And I'm adding four cups of water. The amount of water could fluctuate based on the kind of dimensions of your pan. This is covering by about an inch and a half to two inches. And as soon as this comes up to a boil, I'm gonna lower it to maintain like a rapid simmer. These are at a lovely, energetic, happy little simmer. I'm gonna let those go about 28, 30 minutes. Getting going on the herby part of this situation, I'm essentially making a very simple salsa verde to go with the lentils and the sweet potato. So I've got tender herbs today, I've got cilantro, I've got dill, and I have a handful of chives. And I'm gonna cut this fairly finely, I guess whatever you're feeling in the moment. I'm also chopping the thin part of the stems on the cilantro and on the dill because it's really tasty and it has a nice little crunch and there's no reason not to use it. <laughs> I'm gonna use the zest and the juice of this lemon. If you didn't have a lemon on hand, obviously you can skip the zest and use white vinegar, champagne vinegar, really any acidic ingredient that you want here instead. So similar to the tahini butter, this topping is engineered to really contrast the sweet potato. And then you've got these delicious hearty lentils. So to me, this one is like fully 100% an amazing vegetarian full meal. Olive oil. Salt and pepper. If you wanted to add a pinch of chili flake, I think that would be really nice too. As this sits, the herbs, once they've been hit with that lemon juice and the olive oil, they're going to shrink and they're going to release a lot of their liquid and the flavors are gonna marry in a really nice way too. Mmm, very bright, nice and aesthetic. I think it's good to go. All right, these look great. They've absorbed and evaporated, you know, a good amount of the water, but they're still covered. Totally tender, but not mushy. So now I'm gonna take half of this little impromptu salsa verde, turn off the heat on the lentils and stir the herbs into lentils. So this will give two layers of flavor. There's gonna be a slightly kind of muted cooked flavor of the herbs that's now flavoring the lentils. And then you'll also get this mixture 
like bright and fresh as a topping later. The only thing left for the herby lentils and yogurt topping is the yogurt. So as soon as the sweet potatoes are done, we can pull this one together. Sweet potato topping number three. So the first step is just to melt your butter and get it to the point where it's foaming. When it's foaming really energetically is sort of like right before the foaming will subside and the butter will start to take on color. All right, so this is that nice foaming stage. At this point, I am adding sliced scallions, lots, and a bunch of sliced garlic as well. And I wanna cook these two together until the garlic becomes translucent, starting to turn light golden brown, starting to see a little bit of color on the scallions as well. It smells incredible, like that flavor of onion frying and butter, the flavor of garlic frying and butter, quite intoxicating. After two to three minutes, the whole volume of everything has really shrunken. The scallions are looking really dark green and shrivelly. I'm starting to see some pale golden brown around the edges of my garlic. Now I'm adding my crunchy, seedy, nutty things. This is also, as always, a mix that I'm suggesting, but you can really swap out a lot of things. It's all good. If you are a nut-free person, just amp up the pepita and the sesame seed. You just want stuff that's gonna get crunchy. Because I added so many solids that didn't have seasoning, I'm seasoning again. And things start to move faster now. So the arc is like slowly, slowly, slowly gaining heat, gaining heat, and then you're gonna hit whatever magical temperature and really see that temperature spikes. Now I'm adding my gochugaru. This is a mild chili pepper that you can sub with Aleppo if you wanted to. You could use a smaller quantity of cayenne. So I have gorgeous goldenness. I have curling edges of my garlic. My nuts have darkened by a couple of shades. I can see the butter on the bottom. It's like a beautiful caramelly brown. I've got a little bit of sugar and I'm gonna mix it with black vinegar. This black vinegar has like a really deep kind of malty, delicious flavor. The vinegar and the sugar is just gonna create a sweet and sour element. So it's just been a theme with all of the toppers that we've done for the sweet potatoes that they are robustly flavored, but also provide balance for the sweet potato that they're gonna be served with. Mmm, has like strong chili crisp energy. All right, I'm back in the same pan and I'm just gonna do like a crispy edged fried egg. Cosmo, can you come look at these eggs? Is it just me or do those eggs they, look the, weird? The yolks look really big. <laughs> right? I mean, we'll it's eat like them. A blanket. It's, it's like a blanket. blanket. Yeah. Weirdo alert eggs are done. It's finally dinner time. <laughs> Sweet potato time, sweetie. Woo! Easy way to test is with a cake tester. You wanna go in and meet absolutely no resistance. Then the way that I like to do it is just split these open and you just can pinch them. The skin kind of peels right back. If you need to, use a fork or a spoon and just kind of get in there. I eat the skin, but I eat the skin of a lot of things. But this way, the skin's on the bottom and you'll just be scooping off the top. The color on this one is totally incredible. And then the texture is like a sweet potato pudding. I'm gonna put tahini butter on this guy. And with the tahini butter, this is not like you're doing a little cracker schmear. The tahini butter is the sauce. So, you know, schmeared on there. And for this one, Lots of sesame seeds. You need a little bit of that crunch because that's really the only texture. And then even though the butter itself was very limey, I really, 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 really recommend serving with more lime squeezed over the top. It just like brings everything back to life. That's sweet potato and tahini butter. All right, now we've got herby lentils and yogurt. If the lentils still have some sauciness of their cooking liquid, just serve them with a slotted spoon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the reserved little herby mixture that I made, dollops, 
get it everywhere, get it down the sides, and then some yogurt. This is Greek yogurt. You could use any kind of yogurt, but I think the little bit of cooling, like tanging dairy is really, really yummy. And then finally, you've got all of that crunch mixing in with the like really tender, silky texture of the sweet potato. And then I'm gonna pop the prettiest egg right on top. A couple of these, a couple of those. Sweetie peas, one, two, three. Which one will you choose tonight? This could be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. All right, this is my old friend, tahini butter. Mmm, give me a break. I just like it when the things that I said before end up being true, like the bright liminess, the butteriness, and then that really delicious like burnt carrot flavor of the sweet potato are amazing together. It's great, no notes. Perhaps the heartiest of the three. Lentils, herbs, yogurt. This is one of my favorite types of sweet potatoes. The Japanese sweet potato. I'm gonna get everything. A dollop, the herbs. Mmm! It's surprising how much texture you get from the lentil and the herbs themselves. This is like an absolutely impeccable combination. If I must say so myself, I'm having, I'm going back for a second bite. Mmm! Love you so much. Delish. Wow. Now, this one really wants to be like, it's very show offy of the three. There is so much flavor in the chili crisp. The way that it blends with the sweet potato, crispy edges on the egg. It's crunchy, it's spicy, it's a little, little of everything. Ridiculous. Choice one, choice two, choice three. You cannot lose when every single choice is amazing. If these were all contestants on the dating show, you could choose anyone. You would go home happy. If you ended up with all three somehow on a rotation, your life would be full of fantastic. And you're just like winning, 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 300%, 200%, 300%, 400%, 500 So I hope this makes sweet potatoes exciting, tantalizing, and delicious for you forever. <laughs>